In this presentation, we will take a look at an example of the allocation of occupancy costs. In this example, we're going to have a little bit more of a complex example, a little bit more of a back and forth kind of process. Our goal here, of course, is to allocate the occupancy costs of a building to the departments within it. We're going to use an activity base in order to do so. But we want to show that this is not, of course, an exact science. There's not a right and wrong answer to do this. This is going to be a managerial accounting decision making process. Often there's going to be some back and forth in terms of making this type of decision. We want to show one example of how some kind of back and forth could work, some changes that could be made. Again, it's up to management as to whether or not they want to get more detailed into the allocation and how to use different activity bases and how complex of an allocation base they want to use. There's, a, there's going to be a trade-off, in other words, between the amount of time it takes for us to uh, allocate based on more complex methods and time, of course, is going to be re reflected with money and the added benefit that's going to be incurred, the added benefit being hopefully a more detailed method showing a better, more accurate allocation that people feel is more fair. Note, however, that if it's going to be feeling more fair, it has to be communicated very well. So we could have the most accurate type of allocation methods, but if they're too complex and that we can't communicate those methods to people, then we're kind of losing some of the benefit because of course the people involved the goal of us having more complex methods is to make it fair so that we can explain the process so people understand the way things work and can work within the system if it's too complex to do that then it's, it's going to take away from that goal that objective so let's go through this problem here is our data up top we're going to have the occupancy cost we're going to call it total occupancy costs those will include depreciation on the building, interest on the building, building uh, land taxes, gas, lighting, maintenance. We're going to say that those all add up to 80,000. We're going to call those occupancy costs. And we're going to say that those are going to be affecting multiple different departments that are in the same building. And therefore, we want to apply that 80,000 out in some way. Now, just recall and remember that we could do this multiple different ways. We could have gone back into each one of these line items and said, Here's depreciation, how should we apply that out? What activity base should we use? Here's the interest, what activity base should we use? Here's taxes, what activity base should we use? And apply them out using different types of activity bases, the ones that we think are most applicable to those particular costs. But given the fact that these are all related to the building, we can also add them all up and say, hey, we want to use the same type of activity base, the same method, for the allocation of all these costs that we're going to call total occupancy costs between the departments. That's what we'll do here. We're going to, we're going to then take this 80,000. Once we make that determination, we have to say, well, how are we going to allocate that out? We could just divide it out by the number of departments that are there, but that's not very fair given the fact that some departments are going to be larger than other departments. And notice our question, our goal here is always to try to say, we want something simple, but we want it to be fair. And those things always don't always line up. But we want it to be as simple and fair as possible. So those are kind of our, our goals. And so given that, how can we break out this 80,000? Well, we can say the square footage uh, per floor is 5,000, let's say. And the occupancy cost we just said is 80,000. Total square feet are uh, 10,000. So if total square feet are 10,000 and uh, th there's 5,000 square feet per floor and the occupancy costs are 80,000, one thing we can do is say, hey, let's use the square footage as basically an allocation base. And one way to, to think about that is we can say, well, if the total costs are 80,000 divided by 10,000 total square feet, then we can say, if we divide that out, we can apply out $8 average cost per square foot for occupancy. So then we could take this $8 per square foot and apply it out to all the departments because we're gonna basically apply out the full 80,000 based on the square footage. Now we're going to be concentrating on department L and C. These aren't the only departments. We're just concentrating on L and C. And we're saying L is a first floor department, square feet, 900 square feet. C is on, C is on the second floor and has 1,900 square feet. So if we apply out this method for these two departments, then we're going to say, well, it's $8 per square feet that we're going to apply to your department based on this 80,000. We're just going to say, here's uh, L and C. Here's their square footage, 9 and 1,900. Here's the rate, $8. We apply out 900 times 8, 7,200. 1,900 times 8, 15,200. 
So this is a nice easy method. Again, this doesn't add up to the 80,000 because we're just focusing in on department L and C at this time. So these are two, two departments that are involved in this scenario. This is how we would apply them out. We would then apply out the 7,200 to L and C would get the 15,200. Now you can think about this scenario and you can imagine kind of the competition or the allocation between the departments because of course they're gonna be measured based on their performance and in some degree or to some extent the amount of allocation of these items. And now again, these might be controllable costs or non-controllable costs, but in any case, uh, they, they would rather have less costs allocated to their departments, all right? So the managers of L and C are always gonna to try to be reducing their costs. And C got allocated 15,200 costs versus 7,200 would make sense you would think because of course they have more square footage than L has. But you can, you can imagine them making an argument and saying, well, that's not really fair based on this information. And, and say the next meeting they come up, L C would basically say, hey, you know, we're on the second floor and based on the average value of the floors, the second floor is worth a lot less than the first floor. So depending on what the company is doing, this may be relevant or not. So, so it might be the case that C is saying this isn't a fair allocation because L's on the first floor and that's much more valuable square footage space and you're allocating as if the two floors are completely equal and that's not, that's not fair. If you look at the value of the floors, you can see that the second floor cost per square foot is $10 and the first floor cost per square foot is $40. So this, this doesn't make sense for you to be allocating evenly as if it's an even allocation when clearly it should be weighted more. You should be allocating more to L than to, to uh, the C department. So C department, of course, is arguing for less uh, cost to be allocated to their department based on the, the market value. So then if they ask the managerial accountant, we're going to say, well, that could be true, but that's going to add a whole lot of complication to, I mean, this is a pretty, C, pretty simple uh, you know, calculation. If we, if we take that into consideration, it's going to complicate things. Do we really want to do that? And if, if the top management says, yes, we really want to do that, we think the added complication is worth the time, then we're going to say, oh, okay, we'll, you know, we'll figure something out. So that, now we got to figure out how to, how to take into consideration the fact that the, the cost of, is, is going to weigh in on the amount of allocation in some way. So that's going to complicate things a pretty good deal. So now we're going to say, all right, well, let's break out our costs first between the value-based costs and the usage-based costs. So value-based costs, we're going to say, is the depreciation, the interest, the taxes. Those are going to be things that are going to be more heavily weighted by the the value of the property because if you're talking about more valuable property you would think the depreciation the interest and the taxes should be allocated more to those items because of the, the value of the property whereas the usage based items gas lighting and maintenance those things shouldn't change based on the value of the property so the first thing we're going to do and note as a managerial accountant when we're figuring this out and we're trying to make the two departments happy because we we're, we want them to compete to some degree and we want to keep them happy and make things fair if this is a if this is a relevant issue we want to make this as fair as possible so we want to break this out and say hey this is as fair as, as we can make it we're going to these are value added costs and they they could very well be influenced by the value of the of the square footage these are non value added costs they're based on usage and therefore the value should not be there so that should hopefully make both sides of this happy both department managers happy that we're taking into account consideration the value for these costs but not for these costs that's our goal at least so then we're going to say we're going to take that and we're going to take okay here's the square footage for the first floor and the second floor for our departments 500 uh, 5000 and 5000 for the total of 10000 square feet and we're going to take our uh, $40 and $10 the cost per square foot so we're taking the market cost times the square footage for the first and second floor. First floor, we had 5,000 square feet. The market cost is $40. Second floor, 5,000. Market cost is only $10. That would give us uh, 200,000 and 50,000 or $250,000 total for the total market value. Again, that's not our cost. That's like if we sold it today, according to the market value that we're, we got these numbers from, then we would have a total value of 250,000 for the two floors, 200,000 for the first, 50,000 for the second. We're only going to be using that to help us with our allocation method. So now we're going to take that and we're going to say, all right, let's take that that 200 and that 50 
adds up to the 250 and have a percentage that we're going to take of that. So the 200,000 divided by the 250, that gives us 80%. And then 50 divided by 250 is 20%. That, of course, adds up to 100%. And then we can take our allocated costs. So we're going to say the allocated costs and we're picking up our value based costs now. So the depreciation, the interest and the taxes, we're picking up this 66,250 and applying that out based on an 80,20 basis. So we've got our 66,250 times 0 0.8, 80%, 53,000, 66,250 times 20%, 13,250. That adds up to the total 66,250. And we need to break that out. Now, that would be for the entire floor. If we had one department per floor, then we could use those numbers. But we're, we have multiple departments on multiple floors. So now we need to take that and get the cost per square foot. So this would be the cost per floor. Now we need the cost per square foot. So there's 5,000 square feet on each floor. So we're just going to take the 53,000 divided by 5,000. And that's going to give us 1060. And then we have the, uh, the 13,250 divided by 5,000. So that's the 265. So that's going to be the, the cost per square foot of this 66,250. And then we're going we're gonna to say, okay, that's the cost per square foot for the 66,250, which is the value-based allocation rate. Now we need the usage-based allocation rate, which is going to be 138. That'll be more of a straightforward type calculation where we have the usage based costs. We said that that was the 13,750. And that's what the usage based, the gas, the lighting and the maintenance. And we applied those out straight, uh, straight out. We didn't have to value it differently based on the value of uh, each floor. So we're just going to take then the 13,750 and divide it by the, the total square footage, 10,000 for the two floors divided by 10,000 for the two floors means that we get uh, 1.37, about 1.38. That's what we'll use for the usage-based allocation rate. And of course, it's the same for both the first floor and the second floor because it's based on usage, not on the value. And if we add those two up, we've got the 1060, which we broke out and the value-based rate, and then the usage-based rate. And that comes up with a total for the first floor is going to be $11.98 per square foot and on the second floor it's only four dollars and three cents the 265 and the 138 so now we can then use these rates depending on the floor that we have in order to allocate out the 80,000 costs and take into account the weighted uh, the weighting of the different values of the floors so if we just take a look at these two departments then L and C their square footage was uh, 9,000 1,900. Again, these aren't the only departments on each floor, but they happen to be on two different floors. And these are the two people that were involved in our, our discussion about the values of the two floors. So we're going to say, okay, the 900 times the 1198 and versus the 1,900 times the 4.03 comes out with these totals. So these would then be the allocation of the costs to these particular departments, one being on the first floor, one on the second floor. Now you can see the comparison. This is what we did last time with a really easy type of calculation, straight $8 per square foot. Very easy to calculate. We just used one activity base. We calculated it out and we come up with very different numbers the way we basically tried to weight it out. There's no correct method to do this. This is what we decided on doing. We decided to say management basically decided that this is a more fair method. It's going to be more difficult to, to explain to people. However, note that if you're in a meeting and you're trying to explain this calculation and how it's fair we're gonna and that's what we're gonna have to do note the next meeting that comes up uh we'll, we'll probably see that l uh is going to look for some type of thing that's going to be a, a problem with this type of calculation because now they got more allocated to their department way more than the prior time period and so if they can see any problem with this calculation they're going to say hey they, i don't agree with this calculation and we could go from there and so notice this negotiation can keep can keep going uh, from that standpoint. So the next time, and we on the managerial accounting side are going to have to say, hey, this is why it's fair. This is how fair it is and whatnot. And then one of the arguments, of course, could be, well, this is this may be fair, but it's so complex that nobody understands it, and which could be a valid argument, right? As we get more complex and or it's too costly to go through all these, we, we're getting too extreme on these type of calculations. The cost is worth more than the added value we're getting from it. So those are two types of arguments that could come up as well. So we can expect at the next meeting then 
Elle and everybody else that's on the first floor to look for some problem with this type of allocation method, number one. And then number two, possibly upper management as these kind of games get a little bit out of control at some point might make the argument that says, hey, you know, these things might be the most appropriate thing to do, but they've gotten to the point where we don't really understand what's happening anymore. So if we can't explain these things, then even if they're more appropriate, they're costing too much and they're they're getting and they're not adding the value that they should. So those are types of things, types of back and forth with these types of concepts that will typically occur.